Hi, welcome to my channel and today I have another theatre vlog for you. So today I'm actually heading to Liverpool Playhouse to see Unfortunate, the untold story of Ursula the Sea Witch. I've kindly been invited to the show's press night and I'm not sure where we're going to be sat for this show. Um, I'm going to collect the tickets once I get there. But I did actually see this show last week at the Lowry. It wasn't intending to see it, I was just intending to see it here uh, to review it. But my brother had tickets and he couldn't go so we went last week and the show is fantastic. So I already know it's going to be really, really good. But obviously I'm going to show you around the venue, show you the view from my seat, show you the merch and then give you a full review on the show once I get home. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this little vlog and review. So I'm just at the tram station now, there's 50 minutes till my train. So hopefully I should make it the tram in five minutes. I think it only usually takes about half an hour to get there, so hopefully I should make it. What you wanna do now? Should we head back to my place? When you give me that smile, I think my heart's turned up the pace. I don't care about what we do if I get to be with you. What you wanna do now wants to be afraid of when we're young, stupid, and in love. And close, there's just something about your voice. I think that every word you say to me is like poetry. I just want you for my own. It's really easy to tell that you're the best girl I've ever known. I'm not gonna waste it. Okay, so I'm now at the train station. I actually got here with plenty of time, I've got 17 minutes yet. So I'm just gonna walk over to the platform. So I'm on platform 14, which is right at the other side. So I'm going to walk across now. Moving up lords to 1637, east from the railway service to Liverpool Lamb Street. Please use all available doors to board this train. Please stand back from the doors and I'll pass the line behind. Welcome to the board to 1637, east from the railway service to Liverpool Lamb Street. Okay, so I've just arrived in Liverpool. My brother's gone to the wrong weather spoon. So I always go to the one in the train station, but he's gone to a different one. So I'm gonna go and meet him there because he's got a table in there. So um, I'm just gonna walk up now and I'll get back to you once. Okay, so he's come to this weather spoon, which is just opposite St. John's, which is probably closer to where the theatre is anyway. So it's just here. Just this one. I'm not sure what this one's called. He said he's going to sit by the window. See if I can see him. But he's not by that window. Maybe he's by another one. Go and see. So I've just got my food. I just went for what I usually get chicken burger. My brother ordered the garlic bread and now I'm super jealous. <laughs> he did let me have a piece. So my brother got smothered chicken, which actually looks quite nice, isn't it? Okay, so I've just arrived at the playhouse now. It's about quarter to seven. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have at half seven, but I can go and get my tickets now and head in. So I should have my brother. He's over here. So I'm just gonna go head in.
Playhouse, got our tickets, we're in the gallery, seat 28, 29. I've got my program, but I bought this from the Laura, I brought this with me. Um, so we're gonna head up now, I've never sat in the gallery before, so I'll be interested to see what the view's like from up there. So yeah, we're gonna go and head in now, because the auditorium is open, and I'll show you the view from my seat. Okay, it's so just heading up to the top. Look here. Up here. Okay, so I arrived at C28 and 29. It's quite steep. It reminds me of the opera bar. It's not actually bad. Yeah. C28 and 29. Where you can come. Okay, so we are in our seats now. We're on. We're in the gallery. We're on row C, seat twenty. I'm in seat twenty nine, and this is the view from our seat. That's a good view. Um, when I went to the Lowry, I couldn't see the band from where I was sat. You can see the band really nicely up here, so. That should be a good view. I'm looking forward to starting to be starting soon. here with me and he actually came to see it with me back in 2022 uh, at Lowry and he says like me it's very different to when we first saw it um, lots of bits have changed he definitely took stuff on added stuff and we think we actually found it funnier the first time round it's still really good we definitely found it funnier when we saw it in 2022 anyway it's going to start again soon so I'll speak more about it when we get home so we're now at the train station oh. So we had to leave the show early because we're going to miss our train. We've got here, we have got 10 minutes till it leaves, but we didn't want to risk it. So if we didn't, we didn't stay to the end, we still probably about at least five, maybe more minutes left of the actual show, and then plus the finale as well, which is at least in the eight minutes, five, eight minutes. So yeah, we had to leave. There'll be no curtain call for this one. But I do have the curtain call from the. Um, yeah, just waiting for it to settle on now. So we've actually got off at Ernston today because uh, Nathan, my brother-in-law, said he's going to pick us up. So we just need to find him now. <clears throat> Hi, so I am now back from the show really enjoyed it it was really good a few mishaps that did actually happen during the show um when they wheeled the statue there's a statue that they wheel out and it actually broke in half and then um river medway who plays ariel 
was then singing a whole song, sort of laughing through the song. Um, there's a few other mishaps that happened as well, um, but the cast are really professional and just carried on, so it was really good. Um, one thing that did happen though, we had to leave before the end because it overran. It overran by quite a lot actually, so um, I don't know how, how it overran. I think it did start a bit late, and I think it started a bit late after the interval, which meant we had to leave just before the end. So we actually missed the curtain call and the finale, which is so annoying because it's a really good finale. I really enjoyed the finale. Um, so I've got no video footage from it. However, we did go and see the show at the Lowry last week and I do have the footage from that. So I'm gonna insert that now just so you can see the curtain call and the finale. We had the exact same cast that night as we did this night. I think we had the same understudy for um, uh, Grinsby, so it's the same person. So the cast was exactly the same. So I thought I'd insert it here, just in case you really wanted to see the curtain, a curtain call and um, the finale. So I'm gonna insert that now. And then I'm gonna head to bed and I'll review the show for you in full tomorrow. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the curtain call.
so it's now the next day i didn't have time to review the show once i got back from liverpool because i had to get the kids to bed they were still awake and i just didn't have time so this morning i'm going to give you the review of unfortunate the untold story of ursula the sea witch so I was kindly invited to review the show by uh, the Liverpool Playhouse. I attended the show on their press night, which was on Tuesday the 5th of March. The show started at 7.30 and it had a runtime of approximately 2 hours and 25 minutes. So Act 1 was an hour and 10 minutes, there was then a 20 minute interval and then the second act was 55 minutes. So if you don't know, this show is definitely not for children. This is an adult show and it has an age guidance of 16 plus as it contains strong language, partial nudity and scenes of a sexual nature. Other trigger warnings include flashing lights. So the show did have some merch. Uh, it had programs, which I have here these were five pounds they didn't have any house programs they were just selling these programs which will be the same at every venue um so wherever you see the show the program will be the same and these were five pounds i actually think five pounds is a really good price because this is actually a really nice program so i was glad i picked one of those up um other merch which they had available they had posters which were three pounds they had tote bags which were £10, they had a water bottle which was £15, they had t-shirts for £20 and they had hoodies for £40. So for this show I was actually sat in the gallery, now I've never sat in the gallery at Liverpool Playhouse before, uh, usually when I've been I've sat in the circle and so the gallery is actually the top tier in the theatre, it has three tiers, it has the stalls, circle and gallery. And for this show, I was sat on row C, seat 29. And the view from that seat wasn't great. Um, I did have some tall people sat in front of me, which did sort of block the view. Also, the seats in the gallery are probably the smallest seats I think I've ever seen in a theatre. It was really, really tight. Literally, me and my brother were like this sat like this it was so comfortable so before the show starts we actually moved to the row behind us which was row d um these seats are actually listed as extremely restrictive view um because of the raking it doesn't rake very well on on that row and so that row was actually entirely empty people don't tend to buy the seats on that row however because we moved from our seats in front of that row to that row there was no one sat in front of us so there was no heads in front of us so our view from that seat was wasn't any worse than where we were sat originally so and then we also had lots of space so it's a much comfortable much comfortable to sit because this show is nearly three hours long so I didn't want to be sat all squashed because I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it and review it properly so we moved and it was much more comfortable however the view like I said wasn't great um we did have some tall people sat in front of us during the first half and so I could li couldn't really see anything that was happening in the centre of the stage. I could only see what was happening on either side of the stage or if they were if they were acting towards the back centre of the stage then I could see them. If they were near the front I couldn't see. Um, however, for the second act the people that were sat um, on row B moved and then I had a really good clear view. Um, of the stage so second act I had a perfect view so I would suggest if you are going to see the show try and get seats in the stalls or the circle because you will get a much better view and they're not that much more expensive than the seats in the gallery so the seats we were sat in on row C they are priced at £26 and then the seats that we moved to which are the extremely restrictive view ones on row D they're priced at £11 but like I said I wouldn't risk buying those because if you do have someone sat in front of you you're not going to be able to see anything um, so like I said I recommend probably buying seats in either the stalls or the circle and to be honest they're not much more expensive than the seats in the gallery um, 
they're priced at I think £31 so personally I think I'd paid a little bit extra and have a comfortable um, seat and a better view and especially if you're on the bigger side like me um, the seats in the gallery are just really small and you, you just wouldn't be comfortable so I have to say The Little Mermaid is actually probably one of my favourite Disney movies I think it was the first Disney movie that I actually went to see at the cinema as a child so it's always remained like one of my favourite so back in 2022 when I saw that this um, was on tour I knew that I had to go and see it and when I saw it in 2022, I absolutely loved it. It was absolutely hilarious. And it was one of the best things that I think I'd seen. And the songs were fantastic. So obviously when I found out it was touring again this year, but it has had a big upgrade. Um, there's been new songs added. There's a new set, new costumes. Um, and that the runtime had been extended. And you definitely had to come and see it again and see what they had done with it. Uh, so for those that don't know, Unfortunate is a parody musical, so obviously it's parody, parodying The Little Mermaid. And what the show does is it turns the story of The Little Mermaid on its head and tells the story from Ursula's perspective. And it sort of makes her out to be more of sort of the hero of the story. So the show starts by Ursula telling us her backstory and of how she met Triton and they met whilst they were being taught or schooled by Sebastian when they were young children and the children versions of Ursula and Triton are actually played by puppets. I actually thought this worked really well because this is quite a crude um, show and probably not appropriate to have any children in the cast so I thought it was a good idea to use puppets as the children in the story. So we then jump forward to Triton and Ursula's teenage years. During this time Triton discovers that Ursula possesses dark magic and he's fascinated by this and he then becomes sort of besotted with her and the pair actually end up falling for each other and become lovers. So as Triton is actually next in line for the throne, his father King Neptune wants him to find a bride. So they end up throwing a ball and Triton um, decides to invite Ursula to the ball. And at this ball, Triton is supposed to name his bride and he is actually planning to name Ursula as his bride. However, when King Neptune learns of Triton's plan, he decides to frame Ursula for murder and he frames her for the murder of Triton's cousin, Kirsty the Cucumber Princess. I have to admit, I've never enjoyed the Cucumber Princess part of the story, but it's a crucial part of the story. So when Triton finds out that Ursula has supposedly killed his beloved cousin, Kirsty, he is obviously extremely upset and Neptune decides to banish Ursula to the dark waters. And so with Ursula banished to the dark waters, Triton ends up marrying a mermaid called Athena and he has several daughters. We then fast forward to several years later where Triton's wife has now died and most of his daughters have left and gone on to do other things. Leaving Triton with just Ariel um, and Ariel is now next in line for the throne however Ariel is a bit of an airhead she's a bit ditzy and certainly not ready to take over the throne so Triton comes up with a plan so Triton seeks out Ursula in the hopes that she can help Ariel become ready to take over the throne so from this point the rest of the show retells the story of the little mermaid but obviously from ursa's point of view so like i said previously i did actually see this show back in 2022 and there are a few differences uh, in this show from the last show previously scuttle was more of a part in this show and it was played by a person whereas now Scott has a very small part and is actually played by a puppet so that's one of the differences there's also been the addition of a new character um which is the chef and they've actually made the chef um the character from ratatouille called colette so they're sort of using that colette character from ratatouille um, to replace the chef which is in the little mermaid 
you know this by uh, the fact that she does actually she does actually explain in the song Le Poisson about how her previous job she was found out that one of the chefs was a rat so that is all worked into the script and that wasn't in the play last time i saw it so that's all new material they've also added a new song into the show which is sucking on you which is actually probably my new favorite song um there's also a few other differences in the backstory of ursula um so if you've changed, seen it before the backstory virtually is slightly different to um, how it was last time. I don't remember them having puppets, children puppets, last time. I could be wrong, but I don't remember the children puppets in it last time. Another big difference is the set, and this has definitely been upgraded from the 2022 tour. Set designer Abby Clark has done an excellent job creating this split level adaptable space, which resembles like the deck of a ship at the on the top level and then the level down below is more resembling of the underwater lair of Ursula. Also with the set, the top uh, part of the set also houses the band. The band are visual on stage the entire time and they're on the top deck part at the side. Another part of the set which was quite enjoyable was at one part in the show they actually pull up some uh, gravestones and these actually have some interesting jokes on them um, relating to other characters from other Disney shows. There's one that relates to Jafar from Aladdin, there's one about Bambi's mum, um, there's another one about Mufasa from The Lion King and yeah definitely take note and read what they say because they were quite funny. So as well as designing the set Abby Clark also designed the costumes and the puppets and again she's done a fantastic job the costumes have definitely been upgraded from the previous tour they look really well made they look really detailed and i think they really reflect the characters well from the movie um and the puppets the puppets are fantastic there's several puppets in the show there's the puppets of ursula and triton when they were children which i've mentioned and they were really cute i really enjoyed those and then they also have these creatures from the dark waters which are like these ugly looking fish and i just think they're really really good and really well designed i think she's really done a great job at making this show really come to life and she's just made it look visually stunning. The show is um, visually very good now and definitely better than it was back in 2022. So one of my favourite parts of the show is definitely its musical numbers. The lyrics by Robin Grant and Daniel Fox are witty and really smart and just incredibly funny and I really, really enjoy the lyrics in these songs. Also, some of the songs have undertones of the original score from the little mermaid in them as well so yeah they're really fun songs they have sort of a pop rock feel to a lot of them and i just really enjoy them um, i could definitely listen to the soundtrack all day i really love all the songs so one of my favorite is actually the new song called sucking on you and this is sort of like a sort of like an 80s rock ballad between Ursula and Triton and the vocals on this are just fantastic. Shona Hammock and Thomas Lau who play Ursula and Triton just sound amazing on this track. Their vocals like I said are fantastic. It's definitely a really good song in the show and the lyrics are slick and really funny. Another good song in the show is We Didn't Make It to Disney and this song actually highlights the criticisms and cliches of the disney world and this is staged using the puppets of the fish from the dark waters it's just a really fun number and really enjoyed that one so then there is a song called ask the girl and this is a reimagining of the song um kiss the girl and this focuses on the importance of consent so i really enjoyed that it's nice seeing how they sort of rearranged um the song and yeah i thought that was really good so my favorite song in the original movie is part of your world and they have sort of recreated this song um in a really crude way it's now been called where the dicks are and it is a song which 
tells what Ariel is really looking for up on the surface. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this song. It, it got a lot of laughs from the audience. Everyone seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, like I say, it's very crude um, and a lot of fun. It's a fun, it's a fun, it's a fun song and it's obviously sung by Ariel in her, in this show she has sort of like a, um, a Essex sort of accent and it just makes the song even more funny so yeah it's a very funny song. We then have the title track Unfortunate and this is sort of an alternative to the song Poor Unfortunate Souls in the original movie. So I actually really love this song. It does have some clever lyrics in it. However, the song is sung very fast. So it is easy to miss some of the comic elements which are in the lyrics, which is a shame because if you do actually go and listen to the lyrics, they are actually really funny. So the casting for this show is excellent. Shauna Hannah totally embodies Ursula with her look and her mannerisms her voice is also fantastic and she plays the role with confidence and conviction and she commands the stage whenever she is on it uh, my only criticism would be that in some of the songs with a really fast rap like lyrics she does seem to struggle a little bit to get all the words out and that results in the lyrics not being heard very well and it is the lyrics which is where the humour is so they're not sort of delivered in the way that they need to be to in order to like sort of get the joke so that is the only criticism I have of her performance everything else was absolutely perfect we then had Thomas Lowe who was wonderful as Triton he had great chemistry with Shauna and he has an absolutely amazing voice which was showcased really well in the song To Be King which actually I forgot to mention but that is actually a really good song and that's probably actually one of my favourites as well there's so many good songs in this show it's hard to pick favourites but that is a really good song actually I really should have mentioned that it's like a really big sort of rock ballad again and it really does showcase off his voice really well we then had river river medway who played ariel um so this is the first time that ariel's been played by a drag performer um i'm not sure how i felt about it she gave a good performance but the joke was originally that ariel was this pretty pretty girl and but then when she opened her mouth she sounded like this essex she had this sort of Essex accent and sounded a bit ditzy. Uh, so that was a joke. So now you have the fact that she's a drag queen and also she has this Essex sort of accent. So I think I preferred it in the previous show, the casting from the previous show. But River Medway did an excellent job. If I hadn't seen the previous version, I probably would have loved this. But my brother agreed with me. He also thought that he preferred it before um, as well. However, like I said, River Medway did a good performance. Obviously, Ariel is silent for a lot of the show. So they had to rely on miming and body language to obviously show Ariel's emotions and stuff. And I thought they did a good job. And my favourite part was when um, they had Ariel had turned back into a mermaid and she was... Um, trying to get back to the ocean and the way the way it dragged herself across the floor was really really funny. So we then had James Mawson who played King Neptune and also Prince Eric and I thought his characterization of these two characters was really good. Neptune is sort of like a ruthless eccentric leader um, whereas Eric is more of like an obnoxious posh schoolboy. Uh, and he played both roles really well. I thought he was really funny. Um, and yeah, like I said, I really loved his characterization, especially of Prince Eric. I thought he was really, really funny as Prince Eric. We then have Ali Dart, and she was brilliant in this. She was probably the standout performer for me. I had seen Ali perform previously in the 2022 um version of the show and in that she actually played ursula she was actually on as ursula she was the understudy and she'd actually only had 24 hours notice before playing the part and she was absolutely outstanding in in that and in this she had multiple roles she played the chef 
she played one of Ursula's eels and she also played Sebastian and all three of those characters have very different accents. Sebastian has an Irish accent, uh, the chef has a French accent and the eel has a German accent so she had to flip between all three accents which she did absolutely seamlessly. She slipped between these characters so well and on top of all all that she's also involved in all the dance numbers and she had so much energy on stage she definitely had the most energy out of all the characters out of all the performers she um she really did light up the stage she was just she was fantastic uh, especially in the part where she has to play both sebastian and the chef in the same scene so she's flipping between irish and french accents and she was she was so good like i said she it was seamless she was perfect so yeah definitely definitely the performer of the night for me so on the night we saw the show we actually had jack gray who was standing in for julian capolli and um, so julian usually plays grinsby and vanessa so we had jack playing those roles and if I hadn't been told, I would never have known because I thought he was fantastic. I absolutely loved his performance. He had such high energy. He was he was just really, really good. And like I would never have known that those weren't the parts that he was supposed to play. So along with those roles, he also played one of the eels and a few of the other ensemble characters as well. And so yeah, he was fantastic. Like I said, he was full of energy and he was he was really good. And again, he was able to slip between his characters seamlessly. And again, his characters had several different accents as well. So I thought his portrayal of Vanessa was actually good. However, there was one thing about the Vanessa character, which I actually preferred in the previous version of the show. In the previous version, when um, Ursula has she sings with she talks with ariel's voice and it was very apparent in the previous version that she had ariel's voice as i'm talking with ariel's voice whereas this one it wasn't as noticeable you couldn't tell really that she was using ariel's voice i thought the voice sounded very different to um the voice that uh river medway had for ariel and i thought that just it just sort of lost something with not having that sound um so that is my only criticism of the vanessa part it's just the voice didn't sound similar enough to ariel's so now it's probably a good point to go through the program and i can show you the cast and tell you what the things they've been in okay so this is the program i love the cover i love the artwork of this i think it is really nice and it just says on the front, unfortunate, the untold story of Ursula Sea Witch, the musical parody. And like I said, this is um, the only programme that they're doing for the show. There's no house programmes. It's this going to be the exact same programme at every show. And it was £5. And it has some really nice production photos in. Here's one here. We have a nice one here of Ariel. And then we have this, a letter from the authors. So this is um, the authors just telling you how they came about writing the show. Got another production shot here. We have some rehearsal, some photos from the rehearsals. Some more production shots. Like I said, I think this is a really nice programme for £5. Definitely worth the £5. So we then had the cast biographies. So we have Shauna Hammock as Ursula. Um, I think she's mostly best well known for her role in Orange in the New Black. But she's also done some things on Broadway. She's been in 1776. Um, the Last Ship. She's also done some Broadway national tours. Um, she's been in Les Miserables, Kinky Boots. Um, she also done some off-Broadway shows like Miss You Like Hell. So we then have Rita Medway who plays Ariel and they are known for appearing on the third season of RuPaul's Drag Race. 
Um, so since being on that, they've been on various tours, including Pick and Mix UK Tour, the main events UK Tour, and the official Drag Race um, Season 3 Tour. And it says they've most recently appeared in Sister as Sister Mary Julie Andrews in Death Drop Back in the Habit at the Garrick Theatre and on tour. So then playing Triton we had Thomas Lowe. Um, Thomas is actually originally from Manchester. And it says he was catapulted into early stardom as a member of the teenage pop band North and South. Don't think I remember North and South. It says at the age of 20, he became the youngest ever actor to start as Marius in the West End cast of Les Mis. He was in the original cast, West End cast of Cats. And it says he created the leading role of Billy in the West End workshop of Boy George's Taboo. And then we have Ali Dart, who plays Sebastian. And she's also the resident director, dance captain and understudy Ariel. The things that Ali has done, she's been in 222 A Ghost Story, she's obviously been on working on Unfortunate uh, for quite a few years as well, so there's some things that she's done. We then have Jamie Mawson as Eric and also King Neptune. Other things he's done is he did the previous tour of Unfortunate, he's also played Orson Bloom in Wolverine, uh, Graham in Buzz. Yep, those are some things that he has done. Uh, we didn't actually get to see Julian Capelli play Grimsby, but he most recently has appeared in the Kit Clap Club as part of the Prologue Company. We then had Karina Bushen as an ensemble and understudy Ursula and Sebastian. We had Jack Gray, who is an ensemble and he's understood it, Eric Grimsby and Triton and we actually saw Jack playing Grimsby. His credits include Badgers Can't Be Friends, Cock Fosters and he was also in the Unfortunate uh, 2022 UK tour. We then had Jamie McKillop as an ensemble and understudy Triton, Grinsby and Eric and Millie Willows who is ensemble and understudy Ariel, Sebastian and Ursula. Uh, we then have a lovely picture of Abby Clark's set design. We also have here some of the concept art for the costumes which I think is really nice and really like that they included that. And then this page has the song list. So you can see here in Act 1 you have Nasty, The Atlantic and Dream, Sucking on You, The Banishment, We Didn't Make It to Disney, Where the Dicks Are, An Adventure, Where the Dicks Are Reprise and Unfortunate. Then in Act 2 we had Scuttle Shot, Le Poissons, Unfortunate Reprise, Ask the Girl, Female Role Models, To Be King, Hot Girl Summer, Get Sea, Final and I'm That Witch. Then we have the cast list. So like I said we have Shauna Hammock as Ursula, River Medway as Ariel, Thomas Lau as Triton, Ali Dart as Sebastian, James Mawson as Eric, Julian Capoli is usually Grimsby, um, Corinne Butcham is ensemble, Jack Gray is usually ensemble but he played Grimsby in this performance, Jamie McKillop ensemble and Millie w Willows ensemble. We then have the band and the crew and we then have the creatives biographies here. And here we have another really nice um, production shot. More creative biographies. 
another nice production shot. One there of Triton. We have the producers and the co-producers. We have the production credits. Uh, we have thanks. And we have some information about stage one. Stage one, uh, the ones that have offered financial support for the show. And then we have another production shot here. And then we have um, photos of the merch which is available. And it says here you can also purchase the merch from the website. And I get that is the programme on the back there. It's got its um, social media handles. So in conclusion, I thoroughly enjoyed Unfortunate. It is camp, chaotic crude and just great fun it's such a fun night out at the theatre some of the things i enjoyed about the show is i loved the development of ursula as a character but i also enjoyed the fact that she still retained her traits from the movie i also really enjoyed the witty intelligent humor in the song lyric as well as some of the great one-liners that ursula gets as well however i have to admit i wasn't a fan of some of the more lowbrow humor as it sometimes just felt a bit weird and out of place. So as well as all the humour in the show, the show does actually have some underlying messages. The main one being the importance and power of your voice and that you should be comfortable in the skin that you're in. Um, so those are the messages that the show has. Um, like I said, my favourite thing about the show is the music. The soundtrack for this has some absolute bangers in it um i just love it it's a soundtrack that i could listen to constantly um there is a few songs being released actually of from the show there's not all of them but i love to listen to the ones that have been released uh, and like i said stuck in on you is probably my favorite one i think so i think if you are a fan of disney and you love the little mermaid i think you will love this show it just pokes a bit of fun at it and it's just a really fun show and i think you would really enjoy it so i would rate unfortunate four stars which i think is the same rating i gave it last time i saw it i don't think um any of the extra material or set has bumped it up to a five. It's still a four star show for me, uh, but I would still see it again. I still really enjoyed the show. And yeah, for me, it's a four star show. So the show is on at Liverpool Playhouse until the 9th of March. I will link down below where you can get tickets for those shows. I'll also link down below the official website for Unfortunate uh, and that lists all the places that the show will be touring to. So if you can't catch it at Liverpool, hopefully you'll be able to catch it at one of the other venues on its tour. Uh, so if you do enjoy these sort of videos do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell because I do these sort of videos regularly. I'm actually off to see the Crucible at, in the Sheffields Crucible Theatre tomorrow. So there will be a video for that coming soon. And yeah, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.